Hi everyone, my name is Carly Williams and for my technology profile report, I chose to use visible implant elastomer tags, which is a type of internal implant tagging. Now, I find this topic very interesting because I feel like whenever people think about tagging, they mainly think of the external tagging devices where the tag would be placed on the outside part of that organism. Um, with the internal, you are literally inserting something underneath the skin of that particular organism. So I just mentioned that the visible implant elastomer tags are an internal method of tagging organisms, meaning that there is something implanted underneath the skin of that particular organism. Now, if you recall back to the picture of the frog that was on the previous slide, you could see that there was kind of like this fluorescent color shining from underneath the skin of that frog. That would be what the visible implant elastomer tags look like. So literally, it is a coloration that is showing underneath the skin of that organism. And what that tag is actually made up of is a silicone-based material. Before you insert it into the organism, you would have to pre-mix it right in advance. The reason for that is because it starts off as a liquid. It needs to be a liquid whenever it is injected into the organism, and it shortly converts itself into a biocompatible solid. Now, depending on the temperature, um, like for example, if it is a warmer environment, then it will set in about 45 minutes, where compared to a cooler environment, it will set after about two hours. So that's something that you have to be cautious about whenever you're inserting the silicone-based material into the organism. And you will see this type of tagging mainly with fin fish, crustaceans, reptiles, and amphibians. And that's because they do not have any fur or feathers or anything that would block the skin from underneath. Something that makes this tagging system so unique is the fact that it comes in so many different colors. Now, there are two groupings of the colors. We have six different fluorescent colors, which include red, yellow, orange, blue, green, and pink. Now, these colors do shine better with a VI light, but you can see them with the naked eye depending on the different conditions. And it also comes in four non-fluorescent colors as well, which include brown, black, purple, purple, and white. Now the beauty of having all these different colors is you can inject multiple tags that are different colors and by doing that you can create all these different combinations and those combinations can mean a majority of different things including this is this particular organism, this is this species, this is male or female, etc. So this also allows for on-site field identification which is another quality that this type of tagging has to offer. Okay everyone, so at this time I'm going to be using my pet reptile named Richard. He is a blue tongue skink. Since he is a reptile, this is a type of tagging procedure that could be done on him, this elastomer tagging. So I'm going to use some of my demonstration to show you how the tags would be inserted into the organism. So the first thing would have to be done would be the organism would have to be restrained. So you can see that one of the benefits is Richard does not have to be put to sleep for this particular tagging, but he does have to be restrained. But you can see that it's very comfortable for him. Next thing I would do is I would already have my liquid already mixed and already placed inside of my syringe. So your syringes would already be preloaded and ready to go to insert into that organism. So what you would do is you would hold them kind of like this. You would take your syringe and insert it horizontally Press down on the syringe to insert your silicone base material and then I can release Richard and it would be like nothing ever happened. So I can insert it very quickly and very easily to him right underneath his translucent skin so that you'd be able to see that coloration. Now, on the next slide, I'm going to be showing you a video about this procedure being done hands-on in the wild with an octopus in the Bering Sea.
So I hope you enjoyed your video about the octopus receiving the elastomer tag. You can see that the octopus did have to be restrained, but it did not harm the octopus and they were able to release him right away back into the wild without any harm done. So what I would like to do from this point on is talk about some different studies that test the efficiency of the elastomer tags. So this technology came around in the early 1990s and this is a study that was done in 1994. Now the purpose of this study was to compare internal tags and external tags. So they looked at three different types of tagging. Now the external tagging that they looked at was the coded wire tag which is a very small coated tag that is on the outside part of the organism. You can see the picture that's shaking right now is a picture of that particular external tag. You can see it's very small and that's just a barcode, which does make it kind of difficult to see and to identify that organism on the field. But the benefit of that tag is that they do stay into the organisms very well. Um, they're known to last up to 330 days in that organism and then would fall out. Now, as for the two internal tags, they looked at VI tags and they also looked at the visible implant fluorescent filament tags, which is very similar to the elastomer tagging. We can see once again that they were able to stay in the organism for a long period of time. Um, for the VI tags, you can see that picture shaking right now, and that would be a tag with numbers on it that is injected underneath the skin so that it is secure. That can last up to 160 days to 330 days. And finally, the picture that's shaking right now shows you the visible implant fluorescent filament tags that I told you similar to our last smear tags. They still stand for a long period of time. You can see that they cause that nice fluorescent color to be seen in those octopus arms. And that one can stay in 132 to about 258 days. So what this study showed is that all these different types of taggings are efficient. It just kind of depends on the species that you are working with and what you're looking for with your research. All right, so our next study was done in Hawaii in 1997, once again, to test the efficiency of these tags. But this time we were looking at a whole bunch of different subjects of this tag. So we wanted to see at which depth was best for injection for the tag. We wanted to look to see which anatomical location would be best for the insertion. Um, under what type of pigmentation of the skin you'd be able to see the tag best. And also, if the injector needed a lot of experience to insert the elastomer tags. So what they learned from this study is that depending on the species, it is very, very different where you want to insert the tag, um, the different pigment of skin, the depth of the tag is different for every single one of those species. But out of the 286 fish that they were experimenting with, 67% were recited with those tags after 130 days, which is a long time for that tag to stay into the organism. The study also shows that the tags can be very visible, and then it also shows that there's a very low mortality rate with this particular type of tagging. Um, most of the individuals, like the larger individuals that were over 22 milliliters in length, there was um, a, a rate of 100% of no deaths, but with the fish that were smaller than 22 millimeters, which is very, very tiny if you think about it, there was a mortality rate of about 13%, which really is not that bad. And that's something that could be prevented with the skill of the injector. So once again, this study is showing you very species specific for this type of tag where you put the tag and different things like that, but it does retain very well and it is pretty visible. All right, so our next study was done in 1995. And once again, it was used to test the efficiency of the elastomer tags. And this time, instead of working with fish, this particular study works with crustaceans, which would be juvenile shrimps and certain types of adult shrimps. So what they wanted to do is they were using these tags to identify um, the different generations as they were crossbreeding with these shrimp. And these identification tags worked very well because of all the different variations and orders of the colors that they were able to use. And they also did a histological examination of the elastomer tagging to see if it was safe for the crustaceans. So what the experiment told us is that 
this did not affect the growth rate of the juvenile shrimp at all. All the shrimp were extremely healthy. They continued molting and growing and continuing with their daily lives as if the tag was not even there. And the tag retention was also highly successful. So in 99.9% .9 of the juveniles, it stayed in. And in 100% of the adults, it stayed in for over 14 weeks, which is very successful. So the very last study that I'm going to present to you is the most recent study that I have on the PowerPoint. It was completed in 2013 on zebrafish species. And what they were testing in this experiment, they wanted to see which location on the fish and also under which skin coloration would you be able to see the silicone-based material the best. And they also wanted to see that the silicone-based material would not affect the growth rate of the fish. So that's always something good that we want to check check in on. So the findings from this study was that right behind the dorsal fin at the base was the best location to hold for the zebrafish. But as we can see from other studies done, that is very species specific on where to locate the particular silicone based material. We also saw that the most visible fluorescent color was pink and that is true for many other species as well. We also saw that the growth rate was not affected in the fish and that this can actually be injected at a very young age, um, usually about a month after post-hatch. So that's pretty early on to be able to inject this type of tag. And these tags were retained in the zebrafish for some of them in over a year in length. And another good thing is from this experiment that we found out, is that with proper training, the injectors are able to insert the silicone-based material into the fish at a rate of about 120 fish per hour. So that's a pretty efficient tagging technique that you can do relatively quickly. So I'm going to end my presentation about the visible implant elastomer tags by talking about the pros and cons. So we're going to start off with the pros which have just popped up right now on our slide. The very first thing is that this tagging can be done to very, very small individuals, very small fish, very small crustaceans. Sometimes with the external tagging, they can be extremely heavy, those tags, and some of the smaller organisms are not able to carry those tags. But with this type of tagging, with this internal tagging, we are able to implant them on small fish and small crustaceans that are less than 20 millimeters in length, which is pretty small if you think about it. Next thing is that animals can be tagged with this without any anesthesia or without being put to sleep. But we do know that the organism does have to be restrained. You saw earlier with Richard that it did not cause him a lot of stress to get the injection, but it is possible that it might cause some slight stress on some other organisms. Next one is that many studies show us that does not affect the growth rate of particular species. Now we cannot say this is true for every single species, but so far our data has not shown many negative effects from this. Next thing is that identification can be made on site in the field, which is a really, really nice plus. Um, I talked about earlier about how the tags have all the different fluorescent colors, and by placing those fluorescent colors into a different pattern or a different order, we're coming up with a coding system that can be used to identify a particular individual, to identify a species, to identify the gender of that species or the sex of that species. So that does allow for that quick identification that can be done on the field that some barcode tags that or some Sally tags may not offer. Also we know that the um, the tags being retained is very high. They can be retained for over a year depending on the species. And we also know that these tags can be seen in low visibility, even sometimes at night, with the use of a V with a with the use of a VI light, which is very beneficial. And finally, we're going to end up talking about the cons to our visible implant elastomer taggings. So some cons would be that the injectors do have to be very trained to do this efficiently. They have to be trained on the location, how deep, um, how to insert the syringe correctly. So that might cost some money and some time to train individuals on how to insert the tag. But the benefit is the more training that person has, research shows us the more efficiently they can insert the tags and they can also learn how to do it very quickly. We also saw some from some, saw some from, saw 
from some research that the tags can leave some limited scarring in that particular area, but nothing too fatal or dangerous. We also saw in another study that mortality in some of the very small organisms can be about 15% or lower, which honestly is not a high mortality rate at all, but it is a possibility. Also, the tags sometimes can be hard to see without that VI light, but the benefit of the VI light is in nighttime, if you have that VI light, you can shine them over that organism and be able to see the tags very clearly. Next thing is that the tags do not always stay on as long as an external tag would, but once again, that all depends on the species and the type of conditions that you have. Um, we talked about a little bit earlier how the animal does have to be restrained to get the injection and that that can cause some stress on the organism. Um, our next thing is that this is a silicon-based material and that this material does have to be prepared just before you're ready to inject because it is a liquid and if you wait too long, it will harden. And finally, we've seen from multiple studies that the location of the tag and the depth of the tag and how well it stays in does depend on every individual species. All right, so thank you everyone for watching my video about visible implant elastomer tags. I hope that you did learn a little, about, a little bit about this internal tagging system and the pros and cons it has to offer. Thank you very much.